There's no denying it, cruise food and eating in the main dining room is one of the very best parts of cruising. In today's video, I'm gonna go through 12 tips, tricks, and really things that you'll wanna know about eating in the main dining room so that you have the best experience possible. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now please let me know if you like cruise food as much as I do. Honestly, eating in the main dining room, getting a chance to try some of the different foods that I don't normally eat at home, I personally just really love this. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the frequently asked questions about cruise food, the main dining room, what to expect, and share with you as well some of the tips, tricks, and maybe even like those little hacks that you'll wanna know so that you can kind of make the most out of your main dining room experience. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Before I get started on those 12 tips, let's just go over a few basics that you may wanna know, especially if this is your first time going on a cruise. So firstly, something you should know is that the main dining room is always something that is included on a cruise. So on a cruise, you'll have a buffet, you'll have casual restaurants, and you'll have some restaurants that may have an additional charge, including specialty restaurants. However, the main dining room or the main restaurants in the evening those will be included. Now, something else to know is if you do have any food allergies or food restrictions, cruise ships are absolutely amazing to deal with them and to accommodate you safely. But something that you will wanna do is actually note this on your booking. So when you book your cruise, either directly with a cruise line or with your travel agent, make sure that they are advised and this is noted on your booking. Now, when you do get on the cruise ship, something to do is actually just go over to the Mater D, not at dinner time, really go in the late afternoon. So before dinner, when the dining room opens and you'll have just like a very short meeting with the Mater D, just go over your food restrictions again. Again, just make absolutely sure they are aware and in some cases they may even give you a menu or have a little consultation with you about the different food options so they can even prepare in advance and this is especially if you do have a severe allergy. Now you may have heard that on a cruise you'll often be sharing a table with strangers and this is no longer the case on most cruise lines. You definitely can, if you like, you can do traditional dining and you can share a table with other people. Personally, I've really enjoyed that over the years. I've made some friends that we've had on the cruise and sometimes we've even kept in touch with people after the cruise. But if you do wanna eat on your own, you definitely can do that now. And you can as well, like not choose a traditional dining time, like early or late seating. Most cruise lines will now allow you to have like open dining. It might go by different names across different cruise lines, but you can either reserve in advance or you can simply show up and stand in line. You may have to wait a few minutes, just like a restaurant at home, but you definitely can do this now on most cruise lines. Okay, let's get into those tips, things to know, and we'll even get into a little bit of etiquette in here as well. So number one, don't be late. So this is particularly if you did book traditional dining, if it starts at let's say 5.30 or six o'clock, don't arrive at 6.30 or seven o'clock. It's not open dining. So you really do have to show up at the time that you've reserved for. So cruise lines oftentimes do have two seating, so they may start at six, and then the next seating is at eight or 8.30, and they do need everybody to kind of start at the same time and then to kind of end so that they can clean up for the next seating. As well, you may be seated with other people, so you don't want them to all have to wait for you. So if your dinner time is supposed to be for six o'clock, you do wanna show up on time. Number two, now this is just a good tip if you are seated with other people. So whether you have traditional dining or if you just chose to sit and like share a table with other people and cruise lines sometimes offer this even if you chose open dining. So some things to avoid. It is having any political discussions. I think this is a rule at all times, but maybe especially now, just leave the religious and the political discussions. Don't bring them on a cruise, but definitely don't bring them to a shared table with strangers. Number three, don't feel like you have to be in the main dining room for an hour and a half or two hours. I've heard this said before where the wait staff are maybe very slow or it's just at a generally slow pace. And sometimes people are like, uh oh, 
I've got a show to go to. So a little tip is just let the wait staff know that you'd like to speed up the dinner service a little bit. You are going to a show. You can even let them know what time it's starting at. And a little tip to help to do this is just to order your dessert and your coffee when you are ordering your main dish and ask the wait staff to bring this directly after you eat your dinner. And the other tip, of course, is to skip dessert altogether, go to your show, and then save coffee and a dessert for after the dinner and just go eat at one of the ships like cafes or the buffet and just do that instead. Number four, something that you should know about the main dining room menu is there probably is always going to be something that you are going to like. So there's going to be a nightly menu which has items that are going to change. So you might have you know, a steak dish, you might have a chicken dish, a pasta dish, oftentimes really good items on the menu. And of course, every cruise line is a little bit different in terms of what they do offer, but overall cruise food is really good on most cruise lines, but you're gonna see that those items change nightly, but you also have a few items that stay the same. So what I usually like to do is try not to order from the part of the menu that stays the same, even though there's usually a salmon dish there and I love salmon. I save that for a night that maybe there's just nothing that is super appealing to me on the menu that does change. Number five, order as many dishes as you like. Now, personally, I think this is one of my favorite parts of cruising is really the idea that I can try different types of foods that I may not have tried already at home. My family members can do this as well. I loved doing this when my kids were young because this was an opportunity for them to try things that weren't on the kids menu. And if they didn't like it, it was just no big deal. It went back and they ordered something else, but that's really just a good way, I think, that we all can, well, open up our palates a little bit. Now, just a few little tips, hacks, things that you can do. If you really like something, like for instance, you really like shrimp cocktail, you can actually order like a double portion of the shrimp cocktail and they'll just put more shrimp in that. If you really like more than one appetizer, don't be shy, you can order more than one appetizer. If you wanna share, family style, maybe you're just eating your family or you're a couple, you can definitely order a couple of appetizers and you can put them in the middle of the table. Now, something that I do sometimes is the main dish. I may order a small portion of the main dish as an appetizer and many cruise lines will accommodate you and do that. Now, another little tip is oftentimes when there is a formal night or a chic night or an elegant night, whatever the cruise lines are calling it now, oftentimes that menu is a little bit of a better menu, if you will. So if you really like shrimp or lobster or a really nice prime rib or even a beef wellington, oftentimes you will see these items on those nights. So personally, I don't like to go to the specialty nights on those evenings because I oftentimes find that those are the better menus. But something that we do, let me know if anybody else does this, please let me know in the comments below. But oftentimes when we see lobster tail on the menu and we also see like a beef wellington, we like to make it sort of like a surf and turf. So what we will do is we will order not necessarily both dishes. I really do like it when cruise lines can accommodate you and just put the lobster tail on your main dish, like the steak dish or vice versa. Sometimes they will do that, but you definitely can order two meals on those nights if you like, or just hopefully combine them so that you don't waste the food. Number nine, the dress code. Now I have to say, I know that cruises have become more casual in recent years. And I would say in particular on cruises since the restart, I've noticed really a lessening of following the dress codes. So I think dress codes now are more of a suggestion rather than being enforced, at least on most cruise lines. That being said, you never know when they will possibly turn you away. And I would say in particular for something like wearing shorts when you're supposed to wear pants. So I would say be careful with that because you don't want to get turned away because you're not following the dress code. But at the same time, just something to mention, the dining rooms, the main restaurants are really beautiful. They're elegant. So it is kind of nice to dress up even a little bit, I would say, and it does kind of maybe show some respect even to the other people that are in the main dining room. Anyway, just my two cents on that one, but I would say try to follow at least in principle the dress code on a cruise in the main dining room. Number 10, did you know that you could bring your own wine into a restaurant? So if you have wine and you have that in your cabin, you could bring it by the glass if you want. You could bring wine that you've picked up at a bar and you could bring it into the main dining room. But as well, if you do bring your own bottle, 
into the main dining room and you do not finish it that night, then you can actually leave it there for the next day. And the wait staff, they will just put your cabin number on it and they will have it stored for you for the next day. So this applies even if you brought that wine from home, you may have been charged a corkage fee, but they will keep it for you. And even if you eat in a different restaurant the next night, they can actually still find it for you at the next restaurant. Number 11. Now what happens if you're sitting at a table with other people and you just really do not like that table or the table mates? Now it definitely can happen, especially at traditional dining. Sometimes it's just not a good fit. Simply go and see the maitre d' after your dinner. Let them know it just wasn't a great fit. You do not want to sit with those people the next night and they will find you another table. So they'll make some switches and honestly, it's not really uncommon for them to make some changes for the second night and then you will sit at a table that hopefully will be a better fit for you. Number 12, if you've made reservations or if you're sitting at traditional dining, so you're sitting with the same people, if you're not going to be able to make it for dinner for whatever reason, maybe you have specialty dining reservations or maybe you're just heading to the buffet or you're doing an excursion that day and you think you'll be back late, but let your table mates know if you can in advance and let the wait staff know as well. Now, if you just need to cancel a reservation, you could just pick up your cabin phone and you can cancel that reservation, especially if you're eating on your own. It doesn't make a difference, but at least then they can let your table go and give it to other people that might be waiting in line. Now I have one more tip and I guess it's a little bit of a bonus. It kind of goes without saying, but I think I should say it because, well, you just never know. But basically it is to be polite um, to your waiters, your assistant waiters, the maitre d', the sommelier. You're going to have so many people that are going to be serving you so well. So obviously be really polite. Um, even if you do need something, be polite in the way that you do ask for it. And at the same time, at the end of the cruise, remember to say thank you. Now, of course, you may be prepaying your tips. That's absolutely fine. But just saying a nice thank you, maybe writing them a note if you do want to hand them an additional tip. They very much appreciate it. It's, of course, not an obligation but it is something that you may want to do and they will be asking you if you can fill out the survey. So that is something that you can do also that helps them out. Now, if you are curious about other things that you can do to help the crew members out or even gifts that are the most appreciated by crew members, I am gonna leave a video right after this one all about the things that crew members really do appreciate. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know down in the comments below this video, what are some of your cruise tips and tricks or even your cruise main dining room experiences, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.